Hey everyone, I got another sit down coming up for you guys with my mate Ismail. So I'm gonna play my jingle and I'll be right back on after that. Check this out. <laughs> okay, so again, welcome to the sit down. This is uh, uh, my friend Ismail. I've known him for how long have I known you for roughly? Um, eight years. Eight years. So, eight years ago we met, and um, he's got an amazing story as well. So, as we get into the story, I just wanted to Thank you for letting me sit down with you, man. No problem. <laughs> Thank you for letting me sit down with you. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for letting me sit down with you. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. No, no. Thank you, man. <laughs> just, uh, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. So, basically, you, let's just let's tell people just so they can get to know you a little bit. Just your background. Where were you born? Um, yeah. You know, you, yeah, and all that. So, well, I was born in Germany, and um, you know, I grew up in um, four years in Turkey as well. And um, and the sto basically over there we had a lot of spiritual experiences through uh, Islam and everything else. My grandfather kind of uh, taught me how to um, read the Quran and stuff like that. Not so much the Quran, but a verse from the Quran. Yeah. And um, basically, uh, then I went back to Germany and I kind of was just you know as a youth I was going to school and stuff, and I came to Australia. So. And in Australia, I was basically, uh, I was actually... Uh, so how old were you when you came to Australia? That's I was 19 when I came okay. to Australia. Yeah. So, uh, and in Australia, yeah, I was, I actually came as a tourist. And uh, yeah, I, uh, and uh, there was a lot of struggles and challenges that I had. But on the end of the day, I made it. I sort of uh, got my citizenship and everything else. And... Uh, but during that time, I was living with my uncles and everything else, you know. So your family stayed? Mm. My, yeah, because my mother actually uh, thought I'm going to go back to Germany, but I stayed here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. So how long have you been in Australia since then? I've been here 31 years. Okay. Yeah. So your upbringing was Islamic, so we're Muslim? That's right, yes. Uh, would, you, would you say it was uh, very religious or would you say it was a casual kind of... Like in the village, when I was in the village um, in Turkey, it was very kind of religious, but not kind of so that my grand, my grandmother and my aunties they were all covering themselves up and stuff like that, and and uh, but it wasn't like you know very fanatic where they all go to mosque five time prayer and stuff like that. I would say more of a modern kind of Muslim. So, you said you came when you were nineteen, so. Being 19 in Australia, what was life like for you? So some people, you know, like very much in a nightlife, girls, some people go to drugs, some people do nothing. What, what was your life like? Well, uh, I used to drink a lot, go to nightclubs, uh, meet girls. And um, I was, uh, I, I basically uh, was in, in working in factories and stuff. I was living behind my uncle's pizza shop and uh, by myself. And until 23, 25 years old, I was just wild, basically just going out all the time with friends and they were all on drugs and I was always on alcohol and okay. all sort of stuff. So what, at that time when you kind of got exposed in a sense, the lifestyle here and having your freedom, doing your own job, you know, drinking, going out, yeah. what would you say, did you keep believing in some sort of God? Did you believe that God exists still? Did you stop believing? Where, where was that in your life? What well, uh, because I grew up in in Islam, and um, my grandfather was t taught me how to, uh, you know, uh, a verse from the Quran, and, and they were saying Allah is our God and Muhammad is our prophet and stuff like that. I went into that mentality uh, when I was in Germany uh, before I came to Australia. There was a Sunni friend I really loved him much, and he, his his name was Ali, and uh, he said until one person. A Muslim person doesn't uh, die the whole world is not going to uh, you know to be destroyed and I said what so say that again so basically uh, all Muslims once they die normally naturally after there's no Muslims left then yeah. God's gonna destroy the whole world yes because so, the Muslims are special sort of thing. that's right okay. so I thought to myself if 
So you're saying to me, I said, uh, if one Muslim still lives, Allah is not going to destroy the whole world. And then I completely just twisted my belief in God because in my mind I always thought, you know, I wonder what God is like, what, what God does, uh, wants from us. So what did that make you feel then? Like when he made that comment, what, what is that you said? You, you made me twist my belief system in God. What changed? What, what do you believe now? Because what, what I, did you believe? I, thought, I thought, you know, in my mind, I thought it can't be true. I, I just didn't think that that, is, that that can't be. God can't be that simple. Because he simplified God in that sense. And I didn't believe in that. Yeah. And I said, why is he like that? What? And then he was saying that Allah, for Allah, we are slaves. We are slaves for Allah. And I said, how can uh, we are be slaves? He created us. I mean, let's say you get married and you have children. They're not slaves, you know? Yeah, they're children. They're children. So we are his children. Why do you say that we are slaves? And I said, what's the purpose then? I mean, why did he create us? To be slaves? To do what? So it, it just completely twisted me in that okay. sense when he said, you know, and then... And then because he was a more strict or serious follower of yes, Islam, so yes. therefore you took a really... Yes. On board that he was yes. saying that Allah in the Quran says that you know Muslims are slaves to him. That's yes. it. Or people are slaves to him. That's it. Yes. Okay. I actually went to the mosque with him. I was actually doing my five time prayer and I was actually reading and learning Arabic and I was able to write my whole name in Arabic as well. And then uh, this Imam, which is a, like a priest, Muslim priest, he was saying, look at look at these people outside. And this was in Germany. He said they're all going to hell. That's when I actually got out of the mosque. Wow. So when he said that only one Muslim is, as long as one Muslim lives and Allah is not going to destroy, I thought, look, this is what happened and this is what you're saying to me, but I do not believe that. God cannot be like that. That to me is a corrupt God then. So I didn't, I did not understand the concept of what he's trying to say. Gotcha. And he was saying we are slaves. And then he says, but only when one Muslim lives, the world is not going to destroy. But yeah, yet we are slaves. That did, did, not, did not make sense to me. Gotcha, gotcha. Because you were yeah. learning to understand the aspects of who God is. Who or God the, God is. Of, the God that they're teaching you about, the Allah. That's right. And uh, when they started opening up and explaining from the Quran who he actually is or what, he, right. what he says about himself in the Quran, That's you're right. like, uh, this, this can't be the God. This can't be the God. Okay. So I, I disagreed with that. Okay. So, in speaking about that then, yeah. what, when was it, um, did you keep saying you're a Muslim? Did you, did you become an atheist from then on? Or did you still believe in God, but you didn't accept their description of him um, before you became a Christian? Because now he's, he's, a, uh, you know, he's in love with God, he's in love with Jesus, he's you know, a sincere you know, follower of the Lord. And um, so... What did you believe after that encounter where they kind of gave you a, a description of God that you thought, this, I don't want to serve this slave God kind of thing? I had question marks in my mind. I'm thinking, God, okay, if you created us as slaves, I, I, don't, I don't want to believe that. And I, I wanted to find out what, what he is like and you know, okay. why he created us. And so, so you were open to God? I was open to God. But yes. you didn't accept that description and you were kind of still talking to God saying... That's right. Show me who That's you are, right. sort of thing. Okay, yeah. well, man. All right. And tell me then, when did the God of the Bible, uh, when did you start coming towards Him and to Jesus being the Son? Because just for you guys that don't know, uh, there's the, the Quran and the Bible, they'll have similar stories and they'll have, have similar names and encounters that happen. But then there's slight differences that start happening and even some stories are completely different but yet using the names of the person like say Ibrahim or Abraham, Moses. But then there's little changes of the story. So both of the books can't be from God. And one of them, both of them are claiming they are from God. So the Quran or the, the Muslim scholars start saying that the Bible has been changed but there's no, it has never been changed if you look into it yourself. But this is what they just say. And it's not even written in the Quran that it's been changed or anything. So... They need to say that because they, these two books contradict one another in the stories. And one of the biggest contradictions is that uh, in the Quran it says that God has never had a son. He doesn't beget anyone, neither was he born. So he, was, he didn't give birth to anybody, neither was he born. But in the Bible it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So... He, it's a complete contradiction in the, in the Bible. It says God had a son because he wants to, not because he needs to, not because of, 
He doesn't need us either, but he wanted to have a son. All right, so he's got Jesus, his son, that came to the world as a baby, born and become a man. And so he stayed innocent till he was about 33 years old to give his life to die for the ones who were guilty, us that have sinned against God. In the Quran, that's the second thing that it says that God had no son, and don't even say that because that's a sin. And the second thing the Quran says is that he never actually died on the cross, um, but he was made to look like it was him. So this is very two big contradictions because in 1 John he says that if you deny the son, you've denied the father and you don't even know who God is. So it's, uh, it's knowing Jesus as the son that's going to get you to understand or open your eyes to who God really is. Secondly, that if you do not accept the sacrifice, the undeserving sacrifice of Jesus, he says in the Bible that we will die in our sin. Because nothing can cleanse it. God can forgive us, but He couldn't cleanse it, the, the dirt, the, the stains of sin in our soul. But with the blood of the innocent Son of God, who was able to cleanse us because payment was made. Um, and so they reject that as well. So therefore, there, there is a, a big distinction and a big difference, even though some say, oh, it's the same God, it's the same God. It's not the same God. It's not the same belief system. It's not just little differences. It's massive. So how did you come to God of the Bible? What actually happened is that uh, uh, in my search, like uh, I was going to clairvoyance. There was like clairvoyance, a, clairvoyance okay, yeah. just to find out about the spiritual world. I was looking at um, also like, for instance, you know, in Turkish culture, you know, they look at coffee cups and they were saying the future, this is what's going to happen. Yep, yep. So as I was growing and uh, that this was in Australia and I was seeing many, some Turkish ladies, they were doing coffee cups. There was even a lady over in Pran uh, where we went just to find out because there was a, a, actually something demonic was happening. And I actually was uh, married then with Dilbert. And she was always scared and stuff like that. And I, and I was looking on the paper and stuff like that. Actually, no, sorry. Somebody actually told us there is this lady go and see her. So we went over there and she was saying some stuff, things like that. And uh, Like a fortune teller, cup reader. Like a cup person. reader, fortune teller. And she was actually giving us like a shirt saying you need to wash this seven times or ten times or whatever. And wear it again and blah, blah, blah. All this other stuff. And then I went even to uh, like there used to be a, um, what's her name? A clever auntie in front of Gully we went there and blah blah blah. So through my search during that time after that once I did all that, I met this guy, a Turkish guy. He said to me he can call the spirits. And I thought, wow, he can call the spirits. So with me, like wanting to know more about God, I thought, wow, this was awesome. Yeah. I, and I said, Can we call them together? And he said, Yeah. Yeah, if you can, I can. And I said, That's awesome. What happened is I, I said, you know, how do you call the spirits? Like, you know, we, which ones are coming? And he says, well, the good spirits are coming and sometimes the bad spirits are coming. And I said, okay. So we're sitting down with our family. It's, there was actually his wife, my wife. And uh, it was just a normal coffee table. And uh, he put the yes and the no. These are all Turkish alphabets all around it. Oh, like a widget board. It's like a widget board. So he made up like a widget board. Yeah, like wow. a widget board. Okay. And I thought, okay. And you know, I've never seen that before. Yeah. I didn't even know what Vigi board was, <laughs> okay. to be honest, yeah. that's yeah. the first time I'm seeing And afterwards, on the afterwards, people were saying, ah, oh, that's like a Vigi board. And I've never seen one, to be honest. Anyway, he had this small Turkish coffee cup and uh, he said something in it. He puts it down and then we were putting our fingers on top and this thing started moving. And he was telling us that when the spirit comes, it's actually going to look at the alphabet they need to find out which dimension they're coming. He was just telling me all this kind of stuff. And so basically we were doing this and uh, there were things coming and asking, well, they were saying uh, one came said, you know, uh, I'm in hell and I don't want to be in hell. Another one says, uh, said something else. And, um, and I was thinking, is he the one who's actually pushing the coffee cup? Okay. I got suspicious about yeah. him. Yeah. And I thought maybe this is not real or whatever, uh, because you know there was a lot of other stuff happening there. And I actually did this uh, afterwards with him for about six months. Mm -hmm. During that time, uh, what happened is I was still suspicious because it was only him and me we were putting our fingers there. And what actually happened is he's, he just moved away from the table and went to wash the dishes. And he did not even look at the table, did not even look at me. And he said to me, and I said to him, look, the coffee cup does not even move. And he said to me, he didn't even look at me. And I looked at him and I said, the coffee cup doesn't move. Why is it? And he said, just take your finger off the cup. 
and this thing moved by itself and I was like this and I kind of freaked out and mm. I, all this time during this time I was suspicious yeah. it was all real and what happened is one day uh, I'm actually uh, sleeping with my family because it was late uh, in his uh, house and me and my son and my wife we were sleeping and the mattress was directly to the door where he was he would have to come out to go to the kitchen so in the morning i woke up and i'm thinking wow um nobody's awake uh, and i'm thinking to myself okay uh what's happening i'm waiting for everybody and then literally as i was like looking at the door he comes really nervous uh like he was sweating he was like something happened to him or whatever as he was coming out of the door I saw these uh, visually, like looking at them, like uh, these creatures, they were dark creatures. They had like arms, they were dangling down and the, the legs were also dangling down and they had these uh, like a bat-like kind of wings. And every time when they did swing the wings like this, there was smoke coming out of them. Like literally like you, I, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, he, like this in my bed and I'm thinking, what is this? And there was three of them following him, like this flying behind him. As he was walking to the kitchen, I'm like looking. And I, after like 10 seconds or whatever, I was like shocked. And straight away, I went over to him. And I said, what, 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 are, what is this? What are these things? What is this? He did not talk to me. He did not say to me what they were or what it is and stuff like that. And so there was a lot of other weird things happening. And I said to, to him, look, I don't want to have anything to do with you and stuff like that. And uh, as I was going, literally, it was at night. And he was saying, look, there's two of them coming with you. Or there's two coming with you or going with you. And I said, what are you talking about? Stop talking rubbish. You know, I just... You, so you I, basically I, don't want to have anything to do I didn't want to have anything to do yeah, with it. Yeah. So I was actually uh, going away. So I went home and then uh, we had our second child. And my kids, they, they weren't sleeping properly. We, we were at that time in a rental and uh, I'm thinking maybe they're having bad dreams or something. So he, 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 they were just really just constantly crying and stuff like that. So they were only little. One was uh, just born, the other one was just two years old. And they grew up. So they grew up not sleeping properly. And then once they started talking, they were doing sketches with red eyes and really scary faces. I'm thinking, we never showed them any demonic movies or whatever, you know. So they started looking at these, like sketching them. And then when they start like uh, talking, they said, you know, these things, they're going to kill us. They have red eyes and scary faces. My wife said, ah, oh, that's probably a bad dream. But I said, how can they see, keep seeing the same dream over and over yeah, together, again? Yeah, each of one individually yeah. the same thing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So <clears throat> this, I'm talking about like, uh, about a four, five, six year span. So it, it didn't, it, this was not it six months, quick, a yeah. year or whatever. Yeah. Like every third day, we, they were in the bed, like, come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. They, you know, it's, uh, they're going to kill us. And I'm thinking, unbelievable. Like, we, we were not sleeping properly. So they were seeing these demons or these entities or whatever they were seeing. Yes. Every time, every two or three days. Yes. In the same car. Yes, yes. Yeah. They kept coming to our bed. And me and my wife, it was like, you know. It was getting tired. Like, <laughs> tired. And we were, like, completely sick of it. And So what, what, what did you do about it? What happened next? Well, what actually happened is, uh, you know, we, we couldn't do anything. I didn't even remember my son waking, like getting up and he's like doing all this fist stuff and screaming. And I was slapping him, I was throwing water at him. And I thought to myself, what is this? My, Dilbert was, my wife, she was just going crazy. And uh, what I actually started doing is I started basically putting Quran verses on the doors. Yeah. I was, you know, started reading the verses from the Quran. I called upon Allah, I said, look, get rid of him. And I eventually, I, I'm talking about like for a long time, like four or five years I was doing this, like yeah, reading yeah. in there. And then my mother said, look, you this put is things a, around the window or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. What actually happened is after that, I realized that it's not going to work. I was actually, believe it or not, um, I was calling my grandfather. <laughs> like ancestors. <laughs> ancestors I was calling out. to help yeah. out. I was calling you were desperate. So you were trying was, anything that you remember or I was so, saw or felt yeah, or heard. Yeah. <laughs> I was so yeah. desperate. I didn't care. It doesn't matter who comes. Just I just wanted to get rid of these. So did, it, did any of that work? No. I mean, I actually put salt on the windows. I actually put crystals on the, around my house. Uh, I did a lot of stuff. I even put garlic. I actually went into New Age. I went on the internet and I said, there must be a way out to get rid of these demons. 
My son, he could not even go to the toilet. He started seeing them in daylight. Yeah. My wife actually saw the same dream as my son was seeing it. He was, um, he's, he was getting attacked from these demons and my wife went on. I'm sorry guys my wife was on front of these demons they wanted to tear my son apart she, she is in the same dream and she was fighting against these demons and she uh, she woke up straight away went to my boy's room and he she wakes him up and she saw the same dream about my wife being in the dream they both saw the same dream happening and it was completely demonic and my son could not even go to the toilet for about a year, more than a year after even you know. Is he alone? Yeah, yeah, he could not go by himself. He was uh, asking me or his mother, and he was seeing them in the daylight. He was completely freaked out. My wife thought, "Nah, it's uh, after this dream and after he started not even going to the toilet, she realized that there are something demonic happening." You know, it's a massive point that he brought because many people, maybe some of you watching as well were deceived or are in deception because of your desire for God, desire to know truth, to know why you're here, but you're spiritual. That Satan will use different means to feed that hunger by trying to lure you into witchcraft, into the occult, into the new age, so spirit guides, into uh, white spells, and it's, it's harmless because it's love spells, things like that. There is no such thing as good witchcraft. Witchcraft is witchcraft in the eyes of God. And this occult stuff is occult. It belongs to the enemy. It's a, it's a illegal way of going into the spirit realm without Christ. And there's even false versions of Christ within these uh, practices. They'll say, oh, you can go through the guru Jesus or through your guide Jesus or through my guide, this guy or that guy, meaning demons entities or spirits, they'll call them. But it doesn't work like that. He doesn't share himself. There's only one way, he says. And in the Bible, it says, I am the door. If anyone comes in any other way, he's a thief and a robber. So, meaning coming into the spirit realm, because you can come in. That's why it says, if you come in any other way, you're a thief and a robber. So there's an illegal way. Now, when God is saying that, he's not trying to be mean to you. and He's not standing in an anger towards you. He knows that you have a desire to come to know the spirit. It says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You desire in us all to know God. And so because we have this hunger with many of us to know God, then Satan sometimes tries to come in to deceive us and take us to the wrong path and trap us into the wrong path. And the way we're trapped is if we believe, if he can convince us to believe the lie that is true. And so it, it is a lie. And I pray that you will come out of that, that you will look into who Jesus is and and only choose him. He doesn't want to share uh, his path and his ways with any person because it will destroy you. There's not many paths. It's one. Narrow is the way. And the only true way to God is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the only truth, the truth and the life. No one can go to the Father but by me. He's not lying. He's either saying the truth or he's crazy. So I just please uh, encourage you uh, uh, test him out on that or or investigate that claim. Is this claim true? Because he's saying he's the only way. So again, he's not being rude or mean. He's saying there was a way to open up the door back to go to the Father and back to heaven, but restored back to who God created you to be. And there's only one way for that, and it was Jesus. And so please look into if that's true or not for yourself. So what did work? Well, Tell us what happened then? Well, what actually happened is I knew this friend. Uh he used to be from Iran and he uh, he believed in Jesus Christ. Actually, his wife believed first and then after that he believed after seeing Jesus appearing to him. 
and then uh, so they, they were Christians. Yeah. They turned Christian uh, about a year and a half or two years before me, and uh, he was always talking to me. He was saying, "Look, Ismail, um, you know he's." He's real. I have seen him. You know, he's he's amazing. He came to me. You know, he spoke to me, and he said he's going to unite me with 21 days with my wife and my children, and this and that. I, I was like listening to him, and I said, "Yeah, it's, he's a prophet. You you will see him. He's a prophet." And because that's what Islam believes believes that Jesus is just a prophet. He's not the son of God. Yeah. So I saw. I said to him, "Look, it's he's, it's normal that you see him. He's a prophet. Maybe he might have helped you. That's awesome. That's great." But it was going from one ear and going out from the other. I was not really paying much attention. So, um, because he was being careful with me, because he didn't want to lose me as a friend, and I knew him for a while, yeah? and there was a bit of a gap there, and I, like, to be honest, I could not even tell anybody that, you know, we have demons in our house. Like in a Turkish culture, you can't even say that you have a mouse in your house. Nobody would come and eat you at your place. They're thinking you have the house is dirty or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Let alone being demon. Nobody's even going to believe you. And they it sounds crazy, yeah, embarrassing. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. embarrassing. Yeah. We did not tell anyone. I did not even tell my brother, my sister, my mother. Nobody. Only I and my wife knew about it. My wife was a bit fishy about it. She saw. She thought. Ah, uh, after the dream and stuff, she believed it, of course. But anyway, uh, what happened is one day they came to visit us. Yeah. And the, the this this man's uh, English, his English was not really great, so he wasn't really you know good and stuff. So they come, and his wife was still standing. He goes to the toilet. I gotta go to the toilet. I said no problem. Yeah, it was very, it was like uh, Saturday night or something, uh, where he uh, he has no work the next day or whatever. He goes to the toilet, comes out and and touches his jacket and his uh, things, and he says, "Let's go. Uh, I forgot to do something." And I said. You just came, man. You guys came here to visit and we sit and normally when they come, we sometimes stay until 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, no, no, I forgot to do something. I said, well, you, can't you do it tomorrow? He said, no, 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 I really have to go. I really have to go. And then they left. And I looked at my wife and I thought, what happened? Maybe he he goes to the toilet. Maybe he's constipated. Maybe something happened. He couldn't, you know, he was embarrassed. He went. Didn't think of it too much. Then his wife calls me up three days later. She says, Ismail, I don't know how to say it. I don't know if you're going to believe me or not believe me, but Nasser saw something. He saw something in your house. I said, really? What did he see? Like I, because she doesn't know that I know about it. And she said, look, he actually saw small, two small demons with red eyes and the faces were so scary, he said. Apparently, that's what he said. That he prayed over them, he said, she said that uh, they did leave, but he was so shocked and so afraid of this this event, he just wanted to leave. He could not stand in the house. And I said, unbelievable. How did he know? This is incredible. And then she was surprised that I knew about it. She said, unbelievable. I thought you're going to get angry at me or whatever. And I said, no, no, no. This is what my kids... Then I told her the stories. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, do you know anybody? Can we, you know, get rid of these things? She said, "Yeah, I might know." I said, "Well, what do you mean you might know? Aren't you a Christian? I mean, maybe you got know somebody, priest or whatever. Bring him here and blah blah blah. You know, I want to get rid of him because I was so desperate." Yeah, yeah, for sure. So she said, "Yeah, all right." She calls me back and I and she said, uh, "He doesn't want to come." I said, "Why doesn't he want to come?" Well, he needs to talk to you first. He said. She said to me. I said, "All right." We took a date. We actually went over there. In my mind, even though that I grew up in Germany and in Turkey and I live in Australia, in my mind as a Muslim, and I know that many Muslims think the same thing, we thinking of being Christianity is like this, um, like uh, they have hats, they have a knockout chain on them, they have this beard and they so, uh, how can I say, they, they worship Mary, they, uh, you know, uh, they have, they believe in statues, hypocrites, like in many Hollywood movies, you know, they, they uh, hide drugs in the church, they drink whiskey and start shooting in the church, and, you know, these Christians in the, in, the, in the TV, you know, they're all mafias, and they have the chain there, and they kill people, you know, okay, and stuff like wear, that. A lot of, yeah, they wear the yeah. cross, and then... The, in my so mind, it was yeah. actually hypocrisy. Like, I thought, okay, I'm going to go probably to a church, or one of those guys. Like, in my mind, there was all this negative thought, right? Yeah. And I thought, when I go to this, I'm probably going to the church. So I don't even know. They gave me the address. I thought, oh, it must be a church. So I go there, and I thought, oh, it's just a normal house. And then when the guy opened the door, 
he just had a normal shirt and normal jeans and I thought oh he's normal he doesn't even have a beard <laughs> I, I yeah. thought ah maybe there's a statue of Mary or maybe there's a huge knocking thing where they have candles there or something they're gonna worship that nothing like that it was just a normal house like my house and I thought wow oh that was a big shock to me yeah. so I sit down picture that was painted to you through movies and yeah, yeah. scenes you saw here and there yeah, yeah. so yeah. It, to me they were all like hey, hypocrites and stuff yeah. you know that's this is what my yeah. thought yeah, yeah. yeah. So I sit down and then we introduce each other and stuff like that. Before I could say much, uh, he had his guitar. He was had a really great voice. His name was Ian, and uh, I love him so much. He's a great guy. And what happened is, he uh, said, "Okay, let's sing first. And then we got up, and I thought, "What sing?" I, I, and there was about eight of them. Like my friend and his wife was there too, and my wife was there, and there was about eight or nine. I can't remember. So we stood up and they gave us these pieces of paper and I'm standing there with my wife and you can't, like in my mind I'm thinking, I came here to get rid of demons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm standing there with a piece of paper, this guy's going to sing, yeah. right? And I'm, they want me to sing, go through the paper. In my mind, do you know what I was thinking? Brainwashed, a cult, what a waste of time, lunatics, this, this, this. I was like thinking like this and I was so embarrassed because in Turkish culture you don't just go to a place start standing and then singing with strangers yeah. this is like absolutely completely weird, out of your yeah, you know yeah. it's weird and I'm looking I'm with, under my eyes my wife my, my wife is shaking I'm shaking my head so I just was really upset so I sit down I want to get rid of demons but I'm here standing singing <laughs> so I sit down and then I, I ask Ian I said Ian uh, why didn't you come he said, well, I would have come, but to your house, to my house, yeah. because I would have got rid of them, but they would have come back sevenfold. And I said, well, what is the point? What is the point you're coming there? He said, well, you well, have to believe. I said, why do I have to believe? Aren't you the guy who's going to come and get rid of these things? He said, yeah, I can do that, but they will come back sevenfold in Let maybe just three weeks. Interrupt for that, just so for those of you that don't know, Jesus at one stage actually explains this area. He says, when you go into a house, you you remove the strong man. In other words, the demon entities that are there in that house, he says, which is talking about people as well. And he says the demon flees and goes. And then it, it, when he doesn't find anywhere to rest, he comes back, he says, to the house and sees that it's been cleaned up from the demonic. And then he grabs seven spirits more wicked than itself, he says, and comes back into that 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 person or that house and it says and the person is worse than what it was before so for Ismail's sake and his family's sake he's saying look I can't do this because if I do this right now and you guys don't fill your house up or fill yourselves up with God with Jesus Christ the demons are gonna wait a little bit grab seven demons worse than this and the self more wicked and hurt you guys even more as your family so this is what he was doing it he was saying no for his sake and I just wanted to share that you know? yeah so uh, after that, he's, uh, well, I said, okay, uh, I said, why Jesus? Why Jesus is so powerful? What, what, what is the difference? Why do we have to do this through Jesus? You know, why not in another way? And then he was explaining to me that Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins and he gave us power to drive out demons. Mm -hmm. So he gave us the authority, the keys to do this. And I thought, oh, okay, all right, uh, wow, I said. And in my mind, I'm, I have to get rid of the demons, I have to get rid of the demons. This is what rolling in my head. <laughs> so he was telling me that, you know, that Jesus is the only way, this and that. But something happened there. It's almost like as if I, like, it still didn't kind of register in my mind. But what I said after he said all those things, he said he died, on the, he died for us, for you and for everybody's sins, whoever accepts him and believes in him and accepts him as a Lord and Savior, they can do this. And that's why when you accept him, you can do this. You're the one because you're the king of the house. You have to have Jesus in you in order to drive these demons out. So I was like thinking, okay, what do I need to do? I did, I'm like a straightforward guy. I just said, look, I just want to do this. What do desperate. I need to do? Yeah, I'm yeah, desperate, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't care if he was Hare Krishna, if he believes in cows. Yeah, just fix, just fix the problem. I just yeah. fix the problem. Stop talking. I just yeah, don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and believe it or not, I thought, you know, because I never heard this story about Jesus before. So I, I never read the Bible, so I wouldn't know. So I said, okay, what do I need to do? And he said, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to repent of all your sins. And say, God, I accept you in my life. 
I ask you to come into my life, be my Savior and my Lord. So, and then he said, uh, you know, uh, tell God that you're the sinner and you please ask, uh, please forgive my, my, my sins, what I have done. And then he said, uh, you got to let go of all the people who have done something wrong in your life. Something that you hate, somebody who did something wrong in your life. You got to say that you, you got to say it with your uh, expressing yourself loudly so that the devil can hear it because you're releasing them by saying, I forgive them, God. I forgive them and it, because he says if you don't do that the devil will have a hold in your life and will, will start shaking your life because of that so I did all that and uh, so and then what actually happened is this is just um, never ever had any experience like this they sit me on this chair and they prayed on me and my wife was looking at me as well and she was standing there uh, she wanted to find out what's happening and then this really strange thing happened it was it's almost like as if i'm having a water an invisible water going through me like this <laughs> something happened and it just it's it's like this invisible water was going through my whole body and it's like this invisible water that was actually like literally like as if my temperature was like changing this it, it was like as if i'm in a shell but there's no shell it's like this really strange thing feeling happened all the way down to, to my toes i cried like a baby and since then i have this crazy emotion i always cry especially you know what he did and I, I thought okay um, well what was that and I'm crying like a baby and my wife is saying what are you guys doing to my husband and then they were saying some stuff ah oh, you've been accepted this this I did not understand a thing and then of course after that episode I thought to myself and then I went back I have to get rid of the demons I have to get rid of the demons so it wasn't it was just that and then uh, so God was touching you had an encounter with God at that that night well, without I, you realizing the full details, yes, that's what actually happened that night. Yes, but I didn't know what that was. Yeah, I, I yeah. just didn't comprehend what yeah. what is that. Yeah. Like I just because I never had a feeling like that. You can't yeah. describe it. Like is it electricity? Is it is it some spiritual thing? I just in my because I keep rolling. I have to get rid of these demons. So what happened then is he said to me, "Okay, now you have received Jesus Christ in your heart. Now he's he's got he's." in you and he's explained me all this stuff i did not really understand i said no problem what do i need to do he said you go home you for two weeks you say in jesus name get out of my house you are not welcome here in jesus name get out that's what you got to do for two weeks every day he said i said all right what's going to happen after two weeks he said then i'm going to come then i'm going to come and then we're going to get rid of these demons completely yeah. well, i said all right fine so when I went home, I started praying every night. I said, in Jesus' name, get out of here. You're not welcome here. Go away in Jesus' name. So just very, very uh, uh, practical, exactly how he said yes, I yes. left it like that. Yeah. So I didn't do any further, oh, yes. you know this. I didn't do any of that. Yeah. I just want to, I'm exactly testing. Exactly as he said it. Yeah. I'm testing Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> just like four days or three days earlier, my kids came to the bed. You know, they were afraid. They didn't say anything this time. They were just came, both of them, to our bed. And they, you know, they were like this, and I'm thinking, Jesus doesn't work then. But they were all sleeping fine all this time. And then I asked them, I said, did you see these demons again? And they said, no, Baba. Baba means dead in Turkish. And they said, no, no, we, because they, we didn't see them for such a long time, we thought this time when they come, they're definitely going to kill us. And I said, oh, all right, go back to your bed. <laughs> Jesus is, I think Jesus is working. So I put them back to bed. Yeah. And then Ian and Anoma came, he had his guitar. This time I didn't mind holding hands because we were in the house and we all hold hands and then we start singing. I actually started singing as well because believing, man, you know, my kids sleep fine in the last yeah, two weeks. So you saw a demonstration of the yeah, power of God. Yeah, demonstration of the Jesus power of God. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so then what happened is uh, after they, before they left, Anoma said to me, here's the Bible, uh, read John first. And... This, the, when I first time, 
when I first start, when I first time started reading the Bible, I thought to myself, is this um, like I'm reading it, but the, the alphabets, they were coming out of the page the and words. the words like were lifted up and I'm looking from the side and I'm thinking, is, is this my eyes or is this? I really felt this was alive. It was alive. It was not dead. It was this book was not dead. It was alive. And this these alphabets, it's like it was going in me. And I thought, wow. I read John. I read John one, two, three. I did I did read all the Johns in the in the <laughs> bible i couldn't stop because it just kept flowing kept flowing it's like i needed to it's like it's almost like as if as if i was sucking it in or kind of it was like almost like as how can i it's like it was like water it's like i needed to know this knowledge i was what hit me then is i thought okay it's been a month now and my kids are sleeping all right and this is what if this is the bible if this is the this is what and then I thought to myself, I didn't just believe in him as a prophet. I believed in him as a son of God and God. I, I, I accepted him as that. And I thought, I better read the Quran now. Because I want to know what the Quran says. Because I really, like, I didn't really read the Quran, to be honest. Even though modern Muslims, you can tell any modern Muslim, you, you will see the same, you will get the same answer. 95, in, even I would even go more than that, 95% of Muslims will not read the Quran. They don't, especially modern Muslims. So I was one of them. So then I started reading the Quran and then I went back to the Bible and started reading the Quran. This took about four and a half months. And my kids were sleeping fine. Right? And I thought, nah, this book, Quran, is not real. I don't believe it. There's no power because I used this. I used verses through that. I put verses in the doors. I was calling upon the God of this book. Didn't work for four years. But I called upon this God. He fixed it in two weeks. And I thought to myself, I believe him. I believe that you are God. And I actually called Ian. I said, baptize me. <laughs> and then he booked for the day. And I said, can I have this day? So he booked the day. Because I truly believed. You decided, so you, that's it, I'm going to give myself to God. And that was yes, it. Huh? Yes. From then on, I it's believed. Been, I believed just from the evidence what Jesus did for me and yeah. my family. And, and that the, whole, the Bible is the true word of God. The Bible is the true word of God. Yeah. I, I'm just amazed. I, I, I finally found my God Yes. Uh, from all this search. Yes. yes. I believe He's the Lord, the Savior. He's yeah. just amazing. And mm -hmm. um, Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. You know, he says in the Bible, if you, Jesus said, if you seek, you will find me. If you knock, the door will be open to you. So it's up to you not to just keep having questions, but not look into investigating the questions you may have. You, you know, we're all allowed to have questions. We're all allowed to wonder what's true, what's not. But don't just wonder and then repeat things other people say all the time and say, oh, Bible's been changed. This is not true. That, have you investigated for yourself if that's true? Or did you just hear some guy say it on YouTube or your friend says it or something? Don't be a parrot and repeat other people's stuff. If you really want truth, then go investigate if what you believe in is true. And I please seek Jesus. Give a sincere go to look into who Jesus is, what he claimed, the sources, the Bible, um, and even talk to him. Say, look, if you're real, if you're the one, the only way, the truth, and the life, I want to know you. I want to know if that's the truth. You reveal this truth to me. God, I want to know the truth. Talk to God like this. And he says, if you call on me with all your heart, I will respond. But it has to be with all your heart you're asking him this question. So I pray that you will do that. And I hope that you got a lot out of this, uh, you know, sit down with Isma. Thanks again, man. No for, worries, man. It was a pleasure. No, it was, it was a pleasure to me too, man. And I just want to pray for you guys before we close. So, Father, I just want to thank you. And I just pray, Father. For all the people watching that the, your truth will shine through any darkness, any lie, and every lie, any deception, any false religions and beliefs, any occult stuff that's lying to them, deceiving them, dis destroying them and distracting them from the truth, we pull it down right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare the truth of God that sets us free 
in the name of Jesus will come yes. real in your life right now in Jesus yes. Christ's name. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. And we'll have more coming, more sit-downs. So, you know, be aware, subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you again for watching. Take care.